he's the shove it man. All right, it's time for a new episode of Was It Any Good? The show where we watch back a specific storyline or run of a wrestler with the end goal of figuring out if it was any good. We'll be watching back all the segments and matches that took place to answer our question. Today we will be judging the Kurt Angle run on ECW from 2006, because I have no idea what to expect from this right now. It's well known at this point that this was a rough time in Kurt Angle's life. At this point he was well and truly Perk Angle, and he wouldn't last in the WWE much longer. These were his final actions for the company before leaving for TNA, because his body was broken down and he couldn't take the schedule any longer. So from that, you'd imagine that Kurt Angle wouldn't be very good at his job at this point. We have to find that out. It all starts before the first episode of WWE ECW had even aired, with Heyman announcing that he had chosen to draft Kurt Angle to ECW. He debuts his mouthguard look here. It says violence on it. Angle puts out an open challenge for the ECW pay-per-view One Night Stand. He also beats up Mick Foley of East whilst letting out his perk scream. Angle is a face and he's given the new nickname of The Wrestling Machine. Angle says ECW won't be like the old ECW because he's going to completely change the face of the company forever. Good intense promo and he isn't scared of anybody. He takes out Mick Foley again and Edge at the same time all on his own. It really does feel like ECW are getting a main eventer, which is still a big deal. He isn't over the hill so there's no need to squeal. Randy Orton jumps in from completely out of the blue. Orton reveals he has accepted the open challenge for the pay-per-view because Kurt Angle recently broke his ankle and he's out for revenge. First we get a special ECW vs WWE episode. Straight after we get to see the ECW locker room and Kurt sort of fits in here. He looks nuts like the rest of them. He gets the opening promo on the show so you know he's a big deal. He basically threatens Orton and says ECW's Kurt Angle doesn't take shit. They're putting in a big effort to make him seem like the lead star of the show. But then Orton points out that Angle's gone from headline wrestling WrestleMania to ECW. Which is like being in Hollywood movies to go into OnlyFans. The crowd cheer this because this is ECW. Kurt explains the concept behind ECW Kurt Angle. For the first time in his life he doesn't need to worry about offending sponsors and officials. He would only be worrying about kicking ass. At the pay per view he vows to break Orton's arms and legs and he's going to give him a broken freaking neck too. Orton says by beating Angle at the pay-per-view he will stop the new ECW for ever becoming anything good. A great opening promo from both guys. I loved it. His first match will be a battle royal, ECW vs Smackdown and Raw. Man, every single Smackdown and Raw wrestler get their own entrance, this could take a while. But then the ECW wrestlers all just come out together. At least Kurt leads them, so no points lost here. But come on, this isn't going to help establish the new ECW stars. Angle gets an elimination on Mark Henry almost straight away. It doesn't go well for Team ECW, they're getting thrown out left, right and centre, but Angle's still in there. He had man and Angle for the Team ECW, but Sandman does eventually go. Now it's just Kurt. Angle throws out some random jobber. <laughs> I'm just kidding Shelton, I know you've been watching my videos. Don't worry, your girl has to. It's now four against one because Edge is in the match too, but he's hiding on the outside of the ring. Angle suplexes a bunch of guys and Angle slams the big show. Yeah! Angle slingshots fit Finley out of the match. And I love that hug between the Big Show and Angle too. So off we go to the second WWE ECW pay-per-view. It's really weird seeing them keep talking up Kurt Angle as someone who strongly represents ECW. They say Autumn will kill ECW tonight. It makes it extra weird considering the only real interaction Angle has had with ECW up to this point is where he was considering signing with them until he was offended by the Raven Sandman crucifixion angle. Maybe that'll change but so far it seems a bit stupid to me. The crowd are firmly behind Angle in this one though and they chant for Kurt to break Orton's ankle in the early gun. Most of the early matches are wrestling class for Orton. I think they're trying to get over this wrestling machine gimmick for Angle. I don't know if it's the intimate setting here but Angle just looks more intense than ever. He smacks into the ring pole though which turns the match. In contrast Orton gets chants of you can't wrestle and boring. Kurt Angle comes back for German and an awkward forearm from behind. I think it was just a miscommunication. Kurt Angle hits the three Germans and looks for the Angle Slam, which Orton counters. And then Angle runs straight into a drop kick. Really nice. Angle isn't too hurt and he nails a belly to back and also an Angle Slam. Orton kicks out too. The break is Angle Chant returns, but Kurt can't manage to do that. Orton wants to dive, which you don't see too often from him, and he hits a cross body, but Angle rolls the pin over. It's still not a free though. Orton manages to counter the Angle Lock into a pin, which is close, but not quite. Seconds later, it does end for real though. It's the great Vine Ankle Lock and Kurt wins. 
I'm glad Kurt won this because he really needed this victory to establish himself on the new brand. But I'm going to be a bit controversial now, because I ankle vowed to break arms, legs and necks, but he didn't do any of those things. It wasn't even that much of a match, it was just an average pay-per-view one. When you're in a high energy building, everything just seems better. We'll see if that changes in front of a more boring crowd. Kurt holds his arms out yelling, Yeah! ECW! ECW! Interesting to see where this one goes. On to the debut episode of ECW. You'd think they'd want to start Angle out with a crazy good match. Instead, Angle faces fake Road Rash character Just Incredible in the middle of the show. I guess they want to give him lots of wins to make him a believable main eventer. It's almost like the last seven years of Angle's WWE career are ignored. But actually, it's not that strange, because they had planned for ECW to feel like a completely separate company, at least in the early gun anyway. So he squashes Just Incredible in one minute. It was cool seeing a headbutt from Angle, that's something you would carry over to TNA. Not sure how ECW fans would feel about this, but from Angle's perspective, it's not doing him any harm. He calls out Orton for another match at Vengeance, so that's still a thing. This time he's only vowing to make Orton tap, so although expectations for that match have been lowered, at least they're more realistic. Angle's next match on ECW sees him teaming up with RVD to take on Edge and Randy Orton, long before Team RKO started. Angle has an easy time with Edge before tagging out. Rob Van Dam might be the ECW champion, but he's the one struggling and getting isolated. Angle has the tag after 5 minutes and he hits the three Germans to Orton. Edge also gets one. Orton almost loses the ankle lock, fortunately for him Edge drags him out of the ring. Edge tries to dive on Kurt, which doesn't work either as he gets a belly to belly. Orton chop blocks him to stop the angle slam. Lita keeps being a dick so Angle slams her. The RKO takes Angle out and then RVD wins it by beating Edge with the frog splash. A fun 15 minute TV main event. Now it's Vengeance 2006, and for some reason, Orton will take on ECW's wrestling machine Kurt Angle in the opening match. These matches always start well. I liked Angle trying to German suplex Orton off the ring apron. He doesn't manage it, but it's a cool spectacle. Seconds later, Angle does hit a suplex on the floor though. In the ring, it's turned around though with Orton's cheating techniques into a drop kick. Angle now has an ECW mouth protector, so good to see him embrace his wrestling home. It's all Randy Orton for a while in this match. To be honest, this one couldn't feel any further from ECW. To answer my earlier statement, yes I am missing the proper ECW crowds. Something finally happens when Angle rushes to the top, but the throw is botched. Angle recovers with some much better looking suplexes. The Angle slam is countered into the cross backbreaker for a two. Orton decides to remove the turnbuckle pad which almost costs him when Angle sneaks up to hit him with 8 German suplexes in a row. Someone in the comments tell me what is the record for German suplexes for Kurt Angle. Orton does fight off the ankle lock, but he gets a sort of weak looking ankle slam. Angle has the ankle lock on now for a very long time. Eventually Orton sends Kurt into the exposed buckle and the RKO ends it. Yet again, just an average pay-per-view match. I was certainly hoping for better. Angle pre-recorded segment where he seems like he's on the verge of a mental breakdown. He's upset because he hasn't held a title belt in a while. It's an incredibly intense promo. His whole face is shaking. It's Angle versus Rob Van Dam in a non-title match but the winner of this match does get to go on to Raw to challenge for the World Heavyweight title in a triple threat, so that's something. Angle completely out-wrestles Rob in the early gun and humbles him. Angle seems to be a heel, or at the very least a tweener here. Rob scores with a monkey flip, but Angle takes him straight down for headlock takeover. When they get back up, the wheelbarrow kick knocks over Kurt. Rob wants to dive, and Jesus, Angle just shoves him off the top rope out of the ring. Back from the advert break and Angle's still winning with the overhead belly to belly. Yeah! Something we don't see from Angle often is a backbreaker, but we get one here. The released German suplex gets a two. Good match. The big leg lariat for Rob is a double down. Van Damme is rolling now. He springs from the ropes with a kick. Rob tries his kick from the turnbuckle, but this is blocked by Angle who uses a high cradle suplex. Not seen it countered that way before. More beautiful suplexes. I love this match. Van Dam once again closes Angle down with a super kick. Yet again another counter from Angle now, his diving kick has turned into an ankle lock. RVD makes the ropes. Kurt won't break the hold so Rob has to launch him out of the ring. Rob puts him straight back in the ring to hit the slingshot leg drop, yet another two. Out of nowhere Kurt almost rolls him up. Kurt Angle dodges the rolling thunder and tries another ankle lock, but he's kicked off. The split legged moonsault connects, man another two. Back up on their feet, it's a nice kick from Rob. He still can't dive because Angle froze him from the top for a two. The perk scream says it might be over, but no, Rob turns the Angle slam into a DDT. And then it ends moments later to the five star frog splash. An excellent match, this was what I was hoping for, a pay per view quality match, but it was on TV. Two beaks up from this hawk, there's no need to talk. 
Losing that match seemed to send Kurt off the rails. I'm not surprised, that pre-match promo showed that Angle was about to break. He needed to win. So they drafted more and more people onto the ECW show to make up for the lack of extreme ECW superstar Kurt Angle. This isn't exactly helping his run. He misses 5 episodes of ECW in a row. And no, he's not on Raw either. And what do we get after all that time? The fucking Brooklyn Brawler. No, I'm not even joking here. He says he's going to be the ECW champion, which gets an ECW chant from the crowd. What a strange match. It's Kurt Angle versus the Brooklyn Brawler and it goes one minute. But at least we get another perk butt. All that being said though, come on, it's the Brooklyn Brawler. And we waited five weeks for this. On the next episode of ECW, Angle hypes his number one contendership match for tonight. It's fine, it's a pretty short promo. And that leads us to the final Kurt Angle match in the WWE for 11 years. Kurt Angle vs Sabu. Angle double legs him and paint brushes him. There's a big fight feel to this one. Sabu does a drop toe hold and applies the front headlock. That doesn't help and Angle powers him into the corner. In the other corner, Angle smashes into the ring pole. It gets even more hard hitting when Sabu back body drops Angle out of the ring. After the advert break, Sabu's still doing well as he hits the springboard DDT. The overhead belly to belly shuts Sabu down. Sabu tries to catch a breather on the outside, but Angle doesn't believe in having a breather and he dumps him with a fireman's carry. Angle has the leg scissors on for a while now. Sabu with some pretty rough looking shots to Angle's head to get him off of that one. Once they're up, Angle hits a big knee, extra aggressive tone to this match. Sabu with some typical Sabu-like offense now, which gets him a two. Now there's a double down after a big kick from Sabu. Really good match here. Couple of Germans from Angle in retaliation, but he can't do the Angle slam. Sabu drop kicks him and hits another springboard kick. Who said Sabu can't have fun matches without weapons? Angle switches the camel clutch into the ankle lock. Sabu sends him out of the ring with authority. Sabu makes it back to his feet and throws himself out of the ring. Back in the ring, Sabu with a beautiful splash, turning in midair. Just a two, lovely last second kick out from Angle. Sabu has the armbar on now, which is flawlessly turned into an ankle lock. But before Sabu can tap, Rob Van Dam storms the ring and he hits Kurt, the Van Daminator, and a chair assisted leg drop. Van Dam says something to Kurt and then it ends. No chance of please don't leave or anything because Kurt Angle leaving WWE came completely out of the blue. Another really good match, the second best match of this run. Oh, and it was a no contest which seems a bit harsh on Kurt, but I guess Rob is just a dick. The next episode of ECW started with hype for a triple threat ladder match between Angle, Sabu and RVD. And what a match that would have been. But seconds later Paul Heyman announces that Angle has suffered a severe groin tear and he's medically suspending him. Plans were supposed to be that Angle would win the ECW Heavyweight title, possibly at December to dismember, but Angle quit the WWE in August and was in TNA by October of that year. I am going to say this though as a final point, I think Angle leaving ECW when he did really harmed their brand. They obviously had plans to make Angle and RVD the guys there, but when Angle left, they just tried loads of different people and nobody seemed to fit. Angle bested all of them. I'm not knocking Angle, he wasn't in the right place in his life to be able to steer a company. So we've got to figure out if this ECW wrestling machine gimmick was any good. And I'm going to say, yes it was. The whole thing was only two months long, and he was missing for half of it, so there wasn't too much here. And bear in mind, what you just witnessed was this man at the worst time in his life. When Angle was on the ECW show, he was made to look like a big deal. He had some good matches, and he was working on his new wrestling persona. And this intense, aggressive Kurt Angle persona ended up in TNA. So this whole thing was good, not great. And if you don't agree with that, I'll make you go late.